Hey, welcome to a new Fixing Fashion video. So in this video, we're going to show you how to repair your clothes. Because, I mean, no matter what you do with your clothes, they always end up breaking at some point. Uh, and we used to be pretty good in repairing our own clothes, like a patch on the knees or a hole in your socks. Like grandma know this kind of stuff. But nowadays we don't really do this anymore. And this actually causes a lot of waste because we throw away all our clothes. So in this video, we're going to show you how to repair them. But before we start repairing, make sure to also check out our academy section where we show you basic techniques that you need in this video. And uh, make sure if you have any questions to go to our Discord. So for now, I actually have a big hole in my pants. And I don't know how to fix this, but Alicia knows. Hi, I'm Alicia and I'm going to show you how to fix Dave's pants. But before we're going to do that, we're going to show you what we're going to discuss in this video. So first, the stitch repair. The stitch repair is basically just a stitch that holds the sides from the edge together. It's not very durable, but a very easy and quick fix. Then, second of all, the patch repair. The patch repair is there to make a stitch repair way more durable by putting a patch underneath or on top of the rib. Then third, the edgement. The edgement is there to repair broken areas like the edges of the sleeves or the collar or the edges of a hole. This is only recommended for thicker fabrics. Then the darning technique. The darning technique is creating a weaving as a patch over a hole. You can do this more visible with contrasting colors or invisible with the same weave and color as the shirt. Then we have needle felting. With needle felting you can patch back a, a hole with a piece of wool. Um, this can be done on sweaters or more thicker fabrics. Then the button repair. The button repair is a pretty straightforward technique. It's basically on how to put a button back on, for instance on your pants or on your shirt. Then the zipper repair, it's a pretty advanced technique, but we'll give you some tips and tricks how to fix this. All right, so a lot of cool techniques, but which one is good for my pants, Alicia? So I think for this one, it's kind of uh, a typical patch repair, as the rib is on the knees, it is kind of worn out on the areas around it, and it is on the knees, so it is a lot of friction and movement going on. So next, we're gonna choose a patch for the expense. So there are many patches out there. You have the ones that you can iron on, which is just you remelt the glue and you put it on the rib. And you have the self-adhesive ones that you just use as a tape. Actually, we don't recommend them as they contain unnecessary materials as the chemical glue or the plastic film. So what we do recommend is stitching. The stitching one is pretty great as you can use any kind of material if you, where you like the color, the material or the strength fun. The ones that we use, what we like to use is the ones from scrap material or from worn out garments where you can't use different parts from anymore. So as your patch material, you want the same weight and the same characteristics as your original garment. So for Dave's jeans, we want to use a similar material. Jeans. And it has Mickey Mouse. So in this chapter, I'm going to show you how to do a patch repair by machine. It's the most fast and efficient way but not everyone has access to one. So later on, we're gonna do it by hand. For now, we're gonna do it with this one. So these are the tools you need. First, the measurement tape, yarn, pins, scissors, patch, and a sewing machine. So we're gonna size up the rib. Ideally, it needs to be two to three centimeters around the rib. If the area around it is worn out or slightly thin, then do it even bigger. So my rib is 17 centimeters uh, long, so I'm gonna do this on 17 centimeters on the patch. And then I can mark it down with some pins. And I do it with the width of 10 centimeters. And then I can cut it off roughly, but don't cut in the pins. So 
So um, turn the jeans inside out to see if the patch covers the hole fully. And then I can just pin it. So now it's pinned and now it's time to sew. So a good and strong repairing technique is the zigzag repair. The zigzag repair is done with the zigzag button on your sewing machine and is mainly used for jeans and workwear. So let's put the area that you want to sew under the sewing machine. Then put the foot down, stitch over the edges of the rib and the patch. Then go back and forth. One quick tip is to put your pins in the opposite direction as the way you're sewing. This is so you can leave the pins and leave the patch flat as you continue sewing. Once it's finished, you can lift up the foot, cut the thread, then you can clean it up from the outside and from the inside and remove the pins. So that was a way to patch repair by machine. Dave's pens are fit now fixed. Thank you. <laughs> Next is to do a patch repair by hand. So for this one we're going to use a patch repair by hand and we're going to do the Shishiko method. The Shishiko method is created by the running stitch and it's derived hundreds of years ago from remote communities in Japan. It is an oldie but very common still as it is decorative and still very durable. So these are the tools you need. A fabric scissor, thread scissor, an extra long needle, 100% cotton yarn, patch fabric and some pins. So here we have our hole and we need to cover it up with this patch. Then we can lace in the needle as my needle is quite long as it helps me to work faster as I need to load up quite some stitches. Then I cut off how much I think I need. Then start from the inside where your patch starts. Then start at the end where you want to make your first stitch. Make a little knot. You can do a double. And then tie them back up. Then if I did my first stitch and I knotted it up, I can start loading up the stitches on my needle. And then I can pull the thread. So now I created the running stitch, which creates evenly spaced stitches. Then for the next line, I need to go step inside. And I need to hop over to the next line. Then you finish up with a dub loop stitch. Cut the thread off. One quick tip, don't pull your thread too tight as it can shrink and deform the patch in the washing machine, especially when your yarn is 100% cotton. So with this hoodie, we had to patch it quite a lot over time. Um, with this one, we used the Shashika technique with straight stitching, diagonal stitching or patterns. So as you can see, these pants have been patched up quite a lot. 
And you can do this, for instance, with the patch underneath the fabric, on top of the fabric, by machine, or by hand, and then quilt it. And you can keep on patching uh, till it becomes a new patch. So patches you can also use to cover up stains. Like for instance that we did here, uh, we used the patch to cover up a wine stain and you can do it also in a different kind of shape, like a teapot. So these light grey pens needed quite some fixing all over the pens, so we used these purple lady pens as patching material, so we give them a new look and we're padded at the same time. So these heavily worn out shorts are worn out by Dave and have been patched up quite a lot with the zigzag patch repair, as you can see here. So I wear this pants quite a lot, so it has quite some rips on, for instance, on underneath the pockets or on the back of the pockets or where I cycled a lot. We fix them with the basic Sushiko technique. So this was a repair by hand. We're going to show you now a more delicate way of repairing called tarning. So in this chapter, we're going to show you a way more refined technique by hand called tarning. Tarning is created by using a weave over a hole to patch up the hole. You can do this invisible by using the same color yarn and the same pattern as the original garment or you can do contrasting colors as we like to do. So you can do this um, preferably on smaller ribs in knits and smaller to bigger ribs in wovens. So we have this little hole in the knit itself, which is a t-shirt, and we're gonna repair that. So these are the tools you need. Thread scissors, embroidery yarn, one or more colors, a needle and a darning egg. So this is my rib and I first need to clean it up. Cut your yarn and split it into three yarns. Then lace in your needle. Then from the inside where the hole is, I make a double loop stitch and just grab one little thread from the t-shirt itself. Then place your needle outside. Then you put your darning egg under your rib and stretch it out. So now we're gonna make the basis of the weaving by putting some threads over the hole. And I don't pull the yarn too much. Now this takes quite a while. So get a tea, I will say, and put some music on and you can continue until you're fully done over the rib. So this is the basis of my weaving called the warp. I can now finish this uh, with the double loop stitch as I did in the beginning and then after that I'm gonna start doing my weft. So for my weft I want to use a green color so it's more contrasting and it creates better effects. With this one I cut it off as well and then also split it in three threads. So now I want to start my weft with my green yarn nearby where I begin my warp. Then I can place back my eggy and start making the weft. So with this I do that by going over the first one, under the second one, over the, uh, the third one, under the fourth one. And this I repeat till I create a little weaving. This also takes some time, so also for this one get a new tea and get some nice music. So now I can do the negative one, so where I ended up, I need to go now under. So I create more strength in my weaving. 
And this weaving is called a flat binding. And then I go up and under and up and under again. And there you go, a beautiful repair. So in this shirt was a hole and we used the darning technique to repair it. And we like to use contrasting colors so it stands out. So here the knit started unraveling from here and we repaired it by weaving it back in with the darning technique. So on this shirt we repaired it with a darning technique and this darning technique uh, consists of two different binding on top of each other. So this was another example for a repair by hand. If you want to know more about this technique, look in the academy. For now we're going to do a button repair. So in this chapter I'm going to show you how to fix a button. It can happen for instance when you eat way too much chocolate and your button fell off. And in this chapter, I'm going to show you how to put it back on. But first, let me show you the five most common buttons. So first of all, we have the shank button. The shank button is mainly used for thicker fabrics, uh, for instance, like coats. And there's a little loop on the back because there needs to be thicker fabrics in between the button and the fabric. Then we have the hook and eye fastener. You can find this in the bigger versions on, for instance, fur coats or in the smaller versions on your bra or on the top of your zipper to hook the last part. Then we have the flap button. The flap button you can find them on shirts for instance or the top of your pants. It's actually the most common one. Then we have the jeans button. The jeans button is two parts, the, the pin and the button itself. And you can mainly find them on jeans or on jeans wear. The snap button consists of four parts, you need to snap them in, and mainly used for outdoor wear or rain protective wear. So now let me show you how to fix the two most common buttons, the flap button and the jeans button. Now we're going to do the flap button. So first of all it's pretty straightforward, follow the holes of the button and go back to one point in the fabric. After you did that you can put a matchstick in between your stitching. You can also use something similar, like a thicker needle. This is to prevent the button from falling off, as there still needs to be a fabric in between the button and the main fabric. Then, if you're done, you can take out the matchstick, use your yarn that you have on the outside of the fabric, and wrap it around the button. In this way, you can create more space between the stitching. When you're done wrapping, you can put the needle back in the fabric on the other side and finish it off. And now you're done replacing your button. So now we're going to show you how to do a jeans button repair. As the jeans button before might have ripped the fabric in the waistband, so I need to first do a little patch repair, as I did already over here. Then I need to make a little hole in this patch to make space for the button. Then I put the bottom of the button in the patch so it can go through the fabric and I see it on the other side. Then I place the top on the pin, put a piece of fabric to protect the top and then I can slip twice with a hammer on top. Now the button is in and now I can reuse it again. So this was a few examples on how to repair a button and now we're going to our last chapter about zippers. <coughs> Fixing a zipper can be quite a complex task and I'm sorry we're not going to show you in this video how to fully replace it but I am going to show you two situations where you might be able to fix it yourself. If you can fully replace it yourself then definitely do it otherwise I would advise to go to a repair shop or an expert nearby. For now I'm going to show you the two situations where you can fix it. The first situation can be that the zipper doesn't close behind the slider and that's mainly because of the zipper slider might be worn out or bent and it's easy to replace it. The second situation is 
when the zipper doesn't run smoothly, I can easily fix it by using some graphite from a pencil and put it on the zipper. After that, it runs smoothly again. So that was it. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you got super excited by repairing. Definitely go to the Academy for more information and go to the Discord if you have any questions or want to share something and want to join the community of repairing. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your clothing. And you can do this in many ways. For instance, combining your two shirts together into a dress. Hope to see you in the next video.